Hello, Bill the Artist here, and we are carrying on with The Incredibles. The last one that we did was Dash. We have also previously done Mr. Incredible, Mrs. Incredible, Elastic Girl. We've also done the baby Jack Jack, and we've done Violet Part. Now, we've done these using felt, cheap felt tips and old pencil cranes just to show you that you can have fun with just about any material. And we're doing these really quickly just to show you even though like the full drawing for these some of these are like uh, between half an hour to an hour uh, tops whereas a lot of my how to draw videos i try to do really quickly in less than half an hour but these with all the color are a little bit different but today we're doing frozone so we shall kick straight in now we've got the paper on the page and i'm gonna divide it up into quarters and again, remember, I used to do this freehand, but using a ruler kind of definitely makes sure that it's where it needs to be. So there's my page divided lightly into quarters, and we are going to use the boxes again uh, to build everything up. So you've got the kind of top of his head is up here on the page and the bottom of his jaw. So here you could you could just draw an oval for his head, but I'm going to draw boxes first. So there we've got uh, our rectangles. And if you check out, if you do like and subscribe, you'll find you'll be updated on all of the new videos that I do. So here we've got a diamond shape for his hand. And there we've got a rectangle coming up for the finger. It's kind of going to go halfway up. This is a very dynamic pose. But yeah, please do like and subscribe and you'll be kept up to date with all of my art videos that come out. And that finger is following that line of that triangle down there. And then his thumb is coming off horizontally over here and you can see, and we can match these up. It's gonna be down where his chin is, kind of down here in a moment. Now his arm, you've got his right arm coming down and you can see that's kind of in the center of this quarter and that helps us to just place things a little bit now his bottom curves round from his leg and his right knee comes there so again you can put a little rectangle in there and a rectangle for his waist there and then we want from off his shoulder so i'll just put a d there for where his left shoulder is and I'm using these box techniques because it gives you, you can put little dots down and you can do dot to dot if you want, but the boxes, you could even do a stick man, help you to place everything. So you can see the tip of his fingers come out here. So we've got a little rectangle and a bit of a rectangle there for his left arm. And his thumb comes further out and you can see it comes quite far over and it comes further than his pointed finger, which is pointing into the distance in the background and then we've got two little rectangles which are his two fingers that are pointing down and then we need his thigh that's coming over here and his knee is right through that halfway line so we've got another rectangle there but the reason I use these boxes and you can see it in how to draw anything part one it just shows the absolute basics of drawing these now I've recently been asked in a comment how to do get the proportions correct. I say you've got the top of your paper and you can see there, put that mark at first. And you can see down here, that if you put a mark there, that's where the bottom of his ice surfboard is going to be. Now again, using these shapes, you can then put everything in, in between these two points using the cross in the center. So do check out not only the old uh, previous drawings, the Incredibles drawings, but check out how to draw anything. The link is in the cards and in the description to the video. And you can see how you can utilize this for any subject that you want. Again, I'm drawing a big oval here. Now, the back of his eye surfboard is there, the front is here, and it hasn't even got a line on it, so you can draw that across. And you can even draw a cross for, to help you, in, even within this shape where you're gonna put the oval and you can see the surfboard comes right over to here and it also comes halfway over in this quarter so you put those little points in and that'll give you a guide for actually drawing the oval 
And when you become even more confident with your drawing, you might just put these little marks down on a paper. You use the border of the paper to build your proportions. Now again, his foot here is a triangle. So I'm going to just put a triangle in there. His foot, his left foot is also a triangle and that's further back and in line with the front triangle. Now his left leg you can see is straight up whereas his right leg is diagonal going up. Now straight away you've got a very quickly drawn in just using simple shapes which will help you then to put all of the other proportions on and we can build this up using these lines. Now again, it's just practice. Draw, spend long amounts of time just drawing rectangles, boxes, triangles, diamonds, ellipses. And again, check out how to draw anything part one and you'll see how I develop my drawing over the years. So now anyway, we are going to get into building up Frozone's detail. Now his nose is directly kind of halfway inside his head. And I'm going to bring his chin. So what I need to do is I've put his thumb halfway and it isn't. It's a bit lower. So this is how you can then work on some of your corrections. Because his chin is just above halfway. So now I'm going to oval that so it's a bit lower down. But again, I'm just whacking this in really quickly and you can do this with the drawing when you're out if you're drawing from life. So his nose is just a nice ellipse shape. There we've got his goggles. So you've got a little rectangle there for his goggles going up to the top of his head. But they're going to curve as they come down. And you've got his blacked out visor his lens and his goggles, and they go outside of the top of his head. Now, again, his mouth is, if we put a kind of diamond shape in, you can just put another bigger egg, we can build down to his jaw, and then his mouth is just a nice little pointed ellipse inside. And then put that little dent in the top for the top of his lips. And obviously he's gonna have this great mustache that he's got. And you've got coming up the side of his head you've got a highlight down here and you've got his kind of chiseled jawline going up and then another little line on the outside where he's got his very tailored kind of goatee beard and can draw the bottom underneath of his bottom lip i say his nose is so amazingly well shaped that his kind of visor goes over the top And again, we'll colour that in momentarily. But you can see there quite quickly how just using those simple shapes. So you've got a little cylinder, uh, cylinder, a little ellipse, a slightly bigger ellipse for the mouth with one inside. And you've just used boxes and then just little curves to build in. And overall, his head is just this giant ellipse, this kind of stretched out egg. And that helps you to build everything up. And again, you can see here you've got the bottom of his chin and you come over and we can now correct the hand because that needs to come across because you've got the top of that finger and the top of his finger comes up to where his nose is so those I'm just going to rub those out a little bit quickly and this is how you can correct very quickly on the fly as you go with your drawing so now we've got his finger using those construction lines that you put in. And this is, again, this is typical superhero pose. So look at any kind of comic with superheroes in. And you come across, this finger is pointed a little bit further out. The kind of fan these fingers are out. And you can draw the outline at the top. And then you've got how your fingers split into three. So you've got the front part, the middle part with a curve in and then where it joins on the hand and you've got a little top of the hand that you can see because his hand fingers are so splayed now this isn't perfectly horizontal on the first little 
joint from where it joins the hand up to the first kind of knuckle bend little joint in the finger and then it's horizontal as it goes out so there's the first part second part third part now finally you've got the fourth part you come from the top of his hand there and that comes straight out and it's in line with this finger and you can just simply indicate all of that in place now the bottom of his hand comes right down underneath and you've got that diamond shape and then you've got another curve inside for his thumb and then his thumb comes out to the middle of his chin so if you draw an ellipse and an egg shape you've got the actual bend in his thumb as well and we can join that up and that gets you Frozone's hand looking out. This is foreshortening towards you. Now from the top of his arm going up over his shoulder and his back, that's halfway where his mouth is. So you can just nice and simply indicate his back going down. Now his arm down to his elbow. He's got very slender gloves, hasn't he, and, and forearm. That's nice and simple. You've got the two lines coming down and then a curve underneath. And you've got his top of his arm going up to where his thumb is. And you've got the shadow that's indicated. But you've got the top of his shoulder going up. And that's like his white of his uniform going up over the top of his shoulder. And you've got the shadow inside caused by his head. Now, coming off from this side you've got his chest coming down right the way to behind this elbow joint and it's inside that diagonal rectangle that you put in at the beginning we can join that off there and again just a d shape the outside of a d if you think you've got the back there of a capital d and then again the same thing for this shoulder and it joins on the elbow comes down very slightly and then you get his gauntlet going around the outside and that elbow just joins underneath. Now coming up to this hand, the top of the gauntlet curves down to the top of his hand and then it goes out to the very top and then these two fingers are just together, the first two fingers, and slightly curved. And then you've got the thumb so again, imagine just an egg shape. Draw the outside of that egg and then join up to where that joins the, fir the first finger pointing out. Now you've got these two fingers that are pointing down right from the edge of the hand. So come out and connect those. And then the gauntlet, you can bring that up right to the thin part of his wrist where it joins where the thumb points out. And then you've just got these two little sausages pointing down for the two fingers for his hand. And then you've got Frozone really starting to stand out. Now, we come from his back all the way down to the back of his knee. This is just like a, a, a very, very, like the bottom part of a big capital C. So if you go from the top of his arm all the way down, you've got this kind of capital C. But just notice how it isn't a perfect curve. It comes down, you've got inside the construction lines, bit straight to there and then it curves and you've got this little marker here halfway and then the curve changes again as it comes down his leg and joins under the back of his knee and you've got the top of his knee and that is going to go and you can see it's kind of just two thirds over on his arm and you can bring his thigh up and over and join the top of his knee now here on his right leg you've got the same kind of thing but we're going to bring it down following that curve the shape of his body down to match and then it joins the top of his thigh you know, his hip is like the where he's kind of waistline to the top of his thigh and then the top of his leg comes down and the curve of his knee now if we you can see there that the line 
comes out from just at the top of his knee to the back of his left leg of his right knee in the foreground so we're going to just pull that across and then we want to bring his knees down and you see the entire body is starting to come together in this gigantic kind of powerful superhero pose and he'd have the huge ice flow you know, and you can actually increase that and even though we haven't got it in the reference photo you could actually put Frozone's ice flow that he kind of skates on uh, you know you could do a curve going back but we'll possibly add that in a moment but anyway we now need to build his leg down so the front of his boot because of the pressure is right up to his leg and we just want that going all the way down to his foot and then you've got the back of his calf coming down to his ankle going down to the boot where you've got this little triangle here again just follow your lines and just use the shapes that you've already got placed to give you the position of all of the elements of his body on the page so now we've got a very tight knee and the calf starts to pull out on the front leg and this one's more in the foreground and you've got the top of the boot here and that's going to follow the curve of the outside of his leg of the front of his shin at the top now we're going to follow the line down all the way to match the line of his leg going down to his foot now we pull out the from the back of his boot just slightly outside the calf and we're going to follow that down to where the ankle is and his ankle comes just to the right side of your center line if you put that in again just figure this out and put your little place markers and it'll help you when you're actually doing your drawing now again you've got a straight line down where the boot is on the side of the foot and then the toes it comes to where the point is and you can just go up a little bit and then connect those now he's got a little bit of patterning in his boot and he's got another line there that flows over so just imagine you're following the curve around from the ankle over the top and we'll even though this is in deep shadow we will do the same thing on this side and there is a pencil outline of Frozone. So now we're going to put in the ink outline, which would be how before digital, BC before cyberspace, somebody would do the pencils and then for a comic book, and then somebody would do all of the inking. So I'm starting with his visor and I'm following the curve and that goes all the way to the edge. And then somebody else would actually colour in. It was very rare, rare that one artist would do in American comics all of the work in British comics an artist would pretty much do all of it they do the drawing and the inking in and it was just black and white way back in the 1980s with a little bit of color and as technology printing technology changed more and more added but in British comics we ended up with color and the artist did the whole lot so here are Frozone's lips showing his teeth inside now we want this curve coming down to where his jaw line is a little bit and then it's a little kink as it comes down to his chin and it's not it's more of a kind of rounded square at the bottom because he's got he's got his kind of chiseled chin and then he's got his little goatee beard that comes up and i'm going to fill that in quickly and then we've got coming all the way down and then you've got the side of his head that just joins and all of this is an in incredible shadow so we can intensify and build that up in a moment now we need to put his rather cool moustache in 
Now we'll start and we'll go out over onto his right, on the right hand side of the page for his left arm. So you got the shoulder comes down, and you got from where his chest is. And we'll just draw. And remember, use the curve of your hand as that comes down and around. Left elbow going inside the gauntlet. Nice curve, like a big, just in front of a big B. Imagine a B. Just keep thinking of letters and the way you form letters, and it helps you for the, some of the smaller bits. I'm just following that line over over to the fingers, round his thumb on his left hand, the underneath of his hand, and then the two fingers in the background. And then just join the gauntlet up. You see how the line really develops and grows. There's his back. We need the line for his suit. And here we've got his thumb coming out and the hand going up to that finger. I'm just going in and doing the lines inside the finger as I go. You could go all the way down and then put the lines in after. Doesn't matter which way you do it. You can just do it either way as you in ink in. So on this finger, there's barely any of these kind of fold lines of the underneath of the fingers, which is absolutely fine. So you can do that that way. You get the hand coming down, around, up, going out to the thumb that's pointing towards you. And you've got those incredible crease lines inside of his glove. So we just indicate those. Now, for his right arm going down to his elbow, and then you want that going up for his arm, going to where his shoulder is. Again, we'll follow the line down his back, all the way to the back of his right knee, the right thigh, the knee, going right the way down to the boot. Now if we, I'm just going to pronounce that curve a little bit more, going over to the knee, and then going down to the front of his thigh. Around the boot, all the way down to the ankle and then around the heel go to the point of his toes and then up and there you've got <clears throat> his left leg done in the background now we want to do his front right leg onto his surfboard do the curve of the top of the boot down to the ankle, right the way down to the heel, and then you can go a little bit more up on the front of where his toes are, and then we can just add that little detail line. Now, finally, we can do the big ellipse. Now, I've just use that because you've got the lines the construction lines in the background i've not rested my arm completely on remember use the pivot from your shoulder and you can go all the way around very very simply and very easily now i've got some of the construction lines i'm going to go back in with a pencil because you've got down the center line on his frozone surfboard you can see through the center of his foot you've got this straight line, which is the direction that it goes. And then from the center, so if you put a little dot right in the middle, you've got like these lines of a clock going out. So you've got a line that comes out there and that's kind of mirrored and then it flicks and curves up. And then you've got four points so you can imagine one two three four and these are going to be mirrored right the way over onto the other side so you can put another one in there's one two three four and they're going to join up and this is for when you're coloring in 
your details. So this is going to come all the way through. So imagine that line comes all the way through and then comes out and joins up to there. Again, this on comes down, goes through the center, comes out and joins on the opposite side. And that's how you can add your details very, very quickly using just simple points and places of reference. So we've got one, two, three, four. Again, on this side, you're going to have one, two that you can see the third one is missing and the fourth one is kind of behind there so that is going to join up to that these are direct opposites that's going to go and join up to that one that's going to go behind that leg and this final one is going to go up right behind that foot and that's how you can fill in the details very quickly now we're going to start with the colour. Right, now I'm just going, because it's such light colours, I'm just going to rub out the pencil construction lines from the inside as much as I possibly can. <clears throat> Remember, especially when I showed you on the Incredibles, when we got the yellow, it would pick up either the pencil or not just the pencil but it could pick up the ink line if you're not using <clears throat> I'm just using this little fine liner and it doesn't say that it's permanent so the yellow from your felt tips and maybe even some pencil crayons or even paints if you're using like a little watercolor set that you may have <clears throat> and so I'm just rubbing this out just to give me as clean a run as possible now I'm leaving as much as I can these pencil lines in for the shapes on the disc again remember how I said you could just you know, draw a big curve going round like that and that could be Frozone's kind of ice trail that he rides along you know he shoots out his ice and we'll just detail that up you know just put a quick outline on nice and easy a bit like you know a roller coaster because he is this kind of superhero isn't he so you can add this and this is what you can do with drawing it's your imagination that will allow you to come up with your different drawings that you want to and you can take something that you see as an inspiration and then you can use that and develop it and come up with your own creativity and that's how creative artists work they utilize their imagination to come up with something like the Incredibles they have an idea and then they'll put down the drawing now I'm using cheap felt tips that you can get from any kind of supermarket or thrift store that kind of thing you know when you go out and you see pound a pound shop or a dollar store <clears throat> you know where you go to Asda or Walmart wherever you may be there'll be cheap felt tips and I'm using these now they're quite zingy and dark but I'm using these and then building up with uh, pencil crayons after
there is Frozone. I hope you've enjoyed that. I really have. That's good fun doing that great character from The Incredibles. I really do hope you've enjoyed drawing that. Do check out all my other how to draw videos, other Incredibles ones. Do like and subscribe for future videos and art and painting time lapses. But do get your pencils out and your cranes and your felt tips and just have fun with your art and just develop and develop your skills and have fun with your drawing through next week. Anyway, all I can say is thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe and I look forward to doing some drawings for you again in the future. Have fun with your own drawing too. Ted R.